Today we have uh, Mr. Eric Dina with us, Bamister Eric Dina. He is from the Neosa Division, Northeast Ohio. He's the divisional music director there for some years. Uh, he's a trumpet major. During the COVID thing, I am aware that he took seriously again his piano practice and trumpet practice. So he sets a good example for us. Um, for many years, he was my accompanist at Star Lake for many events and some recordings. And uh, so we have a terrific relationship. He was the vocal guest in 2018, and I guess that's why we're wearing the same shirt today. Um, so Eric, without further ado, I'm gonna invite you to take over, and um, I won't even warn them that this is gonna be pretty active today, but there we go. <laughs> Welcome. Well thank, well, thank you, Harold, and uh, hello, good morning from uh, bright and sunny, well, not so bright and sunny Cleveland, Ohio. It's nice and raining, so I'm down in my office uh, for the first time in a while. And it's, and it's an honor to be with you to talk about uh, breathing. And uh, I have to warn you that it is gonna get active and you'll understand in a few minutes uh, what, what, what that's gonna mean and what's that gonna look like. So if you want, if you're near uh, uh, some sort of uh, liquid uh, refreshment like your water, you might wanna grab a water bottle. And when we get deeper into uh, the presentation and, and the workshop, uh, feel free to take breaks and all that. And I'll remind you that again, in a little bit. So breathing, posture, air management, all these things related. And to start off, I, I just want to remind you that breathing is one of the chief determining factors in our ability and our effectiveness as a singer. You simply cannot approach or, or, or singing the same way that you do breathing uh, naturally. Uh, I always I would like to relate this to how God created us. And if you think about it, God created us in his own image and he created us in a, in, a, in a perfect manner. The way that our body works together, the number of bones we have, um, why we have uh, two ears and one nose and two eyes and all those things, they were by design. And when you think about it, we don't really think about breathing. We take in as much air as we need to when we need it. We exhale when we need it. If we, uh, if we need more air, we take it in. If we need less, we take it in. And in different rates and in different speeds and different frequencies. So it's just natural. And it's so natural that we really don't consciously think about it. And um, athletes, when we get active, I know the good doctor runs around two, two and a half miles a day. Um, you know, when we do that or work out, our body needs more oxygen. So naturally, our body takes in what it needs. Um, Let's remind ourselves of a couple of things about how we sing and how that actually works. And I don't, I don't want to get all physical here in terms of physics and that, but it's important to know and, and, and have this reminder. So the vocal fo folds are membranes that snap open and, and close while we're singing, while we speak, or while we make noises. There's a little bit of pressure that builds up against them. The folds snap together and the sound is created. When they are snapped gently, a soft sound is heard. When they snap forcefully, a loud sound is the result. The quicker the chords open and close, the higher the resulting pitch will be. So when you st so we start to sing, we start with the breath. The muscles of the larynx bring the vocal folds together. They stay closed until enough breath, uh, or, or pressure in this case, builds up, and a burst of air escapes through the chords. As you run out of breath, the vocal cords are once again drawn together. So it, it doesn't work like a string instrument as some people might use that sort of analogy where you get these kind of sinusoidal sort of waves. No, they're pulses that, that, that happen. And um, this is why it's helpful to think, if, if you want to make an analogy that the breath is like a steam engine that makes machinery of singing function. I'll say that again. The breath is like a steam engine that makes the machinery of singing uh, function. So similar to athletes, we have to train ourselves to breathe in a different manner because we need to control the different factors uh, of our singing. 
Uh, I, I know when, I, when you sing in a choir uh, under Harold or anyone else, uh, you, you, there's phrasing, sometimes two, sometimes four measures, sometimes even longer. Sometimes you're asked to sneak a breath. Sometimes you are asked to, to stagger breathe. Uh, sometimes you, you, you have to uh, take a breath after a, a soft dynamic. Sometimes you take a breath after a, a loud dynamic. Sometimes we take that, that, that breath and we want to make sure that we come in uh, at a fortissimo dynamic. So all these different things require various levels of air intake, various levels of, uh, of, of sustain, and then releasing or recapturing that breath. So I want to give you a couple of definitions. We have two types of breathing in my mind. And by the way, for those of you who multitask and you'd like to play an instrument, all these factors go hand in hand. Um, and so there's two, character, two types of breathing. I call shallow breathing and deep breathing. C characteristics of shallow breathing, uh, the exhaled air is cool in temperature and dry in moisture. So that's the one way you could test when you take a breath. If it's a shallow breath, it'll probably come out dry and cool. The shoulders and arms and other limbs move. That's, that's very typical in younger singers. You see them take a breath. Yeah, yeah, that, that generally is a good sign that they're probably taking a shallow breath. There's an increase in the frequency of the breath. So someone is, looks like they're hyperventilating um, or they're just taking a lot more air than they need, then chances are there's shallow breathing. And then there's a general frantic feeling or nature surrounding the breathing experience. They look like in trouble, they probably are in trouble in terms of taking shallow breaths. In contrast, deep breathing, the exhaled air, is warm and humid and, and, and moisture. Sort of like the last few days around here in Cleveland. It's just, it feels like split pea soup. That's how, that's the, that's how your air should feel uh, when you're breathing because it's coming from the lungs. It really has that moisture. The stomach muscles move away from the body. So you should feel your expansion around uh, where your belly button is. And of course in the back as well, but not as much. There's an expansion of back areas I just mentioned. The frequency of breath is generally less than in a shallow breath. And then generally deep breathing is a calmer feeling and experience. So how do we develop our breathing? I do have some exercises that I can share, but rather than do that, I wanna bring in uh, two breathing experts, uh, Sam Palafian and Pat Sheridan. They're tuba players. And they're gonna take us through about 29, 30 minutes worth of breathing. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I want to pick on, on something that you guys did yesterday and something hopefully that you've uh, experienced uh, during the virtual CMI. Uh, you guys have been seeing the cleansing power or working on that. And so right now, right out the bat at 9, 10 central time, I, I want to sing it cold. I want to hear what you sound like. I, I want you just to experience that as you are right now. So whenever you're ready, Jude, if you can just pop it up and we will sing the third verse and the close out of of uh, the cleansing power. Rest, two, three, four. We're getting ready for everybody in the third verse. Two, three, four, sing.
Well, thank you for that. I hope you enjoyed that. It was quite hard to sing this early in the morning and I'm even an hour ahead of you. But I think it'll be easier if we worked on some of our breathing. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna kind of stand up. You might wanna have a lot of space around you because we're gonna be doing a lot of stretching. Again, have a water bottle or something uh, near you because these exercises are intense, but this will help us to train and as athletes do, overtrain on, uh, on our breathing so that when we need to draw on our breath, it's there and we know what it takes, we know how it feels. Most importantly, we can apply it to our sound and, and we really can get a grasp on, on, on what it takes to effectively sing. It's the steam engine, it drives our singing. And if we really can do it and manage it effectively, it goes a long way. And by the way, we need to do this from the raw beginners uh, from the, the initial singing experience uh, in, in, in singing company, junior choir, uh, gospel choir, whatever it is. If we apply that then, the results are going to be fabulous and the results are going to be more immediate than you can imagine. So I would invite you to stand, give yourself enough room. There's going to be some stretching, which will help work on our posture, and they all go hand in hand. I'll move the chair back a little bit more. There we go. So our posture is going to be uh, worked on. Uh, our, our breath, everything's going to tie in together, and hopefully uh, you, you'll see the benefits of that immediately. So Jude, let's go on ahead and start off. This is the breathing gym. We're going to start with our first stretch, which is going to give us a feeling of the elongation in our torso and also a feeling of ease when we move into the breathing exercises. Put your feet parallel like this, palms out like this, and let's do a trunk twist in such a way. Comfortably rotate. Don't take it too far. Keep going around as far as you can. And then lift your arms up and continue the exercise. You'll notice it's a whole different stretch taking care of a big part of our breathing apparatus. All right, let it drop. And let's do a sigh. Long arms, heavy shoulders. That's what's making the tone. Good job. Our first flow exercise and what that's going to entail is we're going to breathe in for a certain number of counts and then out for a certain number of counts. We're going to start with six in and six out. What's important about this in terms of executing the exercise is that when we breathe in our arms come up above our heads and when we breathe out they come down around the sides and back down. All right so let's just try that. Six in and six out. Here we go. And Nice job. I want to introduce now the four parts of form for breathing. So we're going to start making sure we have the right shape, which should be like we're saying the end of the word wo, which is this shape, o, o when we breathe in. We want our air to be constant, always moving, and we want it to be even. And then more subtly, as we continue to put these exercises back to back, we want to have a smooth change of direction from in to out and from out to in. So let's just right now do seven in and seven out and check that out. Here we go. And. Nice job. Now we're going to put all these back to back. So we'll go sixes, sevens, eight, nine, ten, all the way through. Again, work on form. So shape, constant, the air is always moving that it's even, which means that you're not full after two counts if we're breathing in for 10, and we're not empty after six counts if we're breathing out for 10 or eight or whatever the example would be, and smooth change of direction from in to out, which works on articulations, and from out to in, which helps us with our releases or the ends of notes. So here we go, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and. I'm your arms, Curtis. Mm -hmm. 
eights. Halfway. Out. So constant means it's always in motion. And even means always drawing evenly and Tens. expelling evenly. So you got to watch the shape of the arms. They help you time your breathing. Slow timed breathing. Beautiful. And a smooth change of direction means the release when you change the area of time. That's great. That looks so much better. Let's sigh. <sighs> nice job. Nice work. Here's another whole body stretch that'll make you breathe much better. Patrick, why don't you flop over, loose arms, loose shoulder, loose head, and watch him start deep breathing. That's deep breathing. You can only get the body to rise and fall if you deep breathe. And with every exhale, he gets closer to the floor. Let's have you all flop over and start breathing. Deep breaths, deep enough to have a rise and fall. I'm able to monitor this just by watching you. Everybody's doing great. Now every exhale should get closer to the floor. Beautiful. Now Woo! roll up slowly, slowly roll up to upright. And when you get there, let's oh, take a yeah. deep breath. And uh, do you feel better? Oh yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. Okay, now let's do an exercise that relates flow awareness to dynamics inside of music. So we're gonna, there's going to be three of them. So Sam's going to demonstrate this for us right now. And this would be as it relates to blowing fortissimo air. Good, good. Now we're going to do also add to this, which would be for mezzo forte air, which would be like throwing a dart at a dartboard. So Sam will demonstrate that. This would be mezzo forte air. And then... For the softest dynamics, we're going to float a paper airplane as far as we can toss that. Mm, that's beautiful, Sam. Very smooth, very smooth. Good. So now let's do those together. We're, we're going to mix and match these as we go. So bow and arrow is fortissimo air, dart is mezzo forte air, and then pianissimo with floating the airplane. Just follow me. Here we go. Let's start with some bow and arrows. And Throw some darts. Ten. Further. You missed the board, Curtis. And paper airplanes. Even softer and smoother. One more time, even smoother. Nice work, nice breathing. We stretch to make the body longer so we don't tighten up and get a bad sound. Here's a great vertical stretch. So, we're going to try to hold up the whirl by holding our palms flat and going above our heads as high as we can. While you're going up, try to think of your heels going further into the ground. So you're digging your heels in while you're putting your palms up. A mm. little bit taller, get a little bit taller. Do it as much as you can. Now do it some more. Ooh. You're all liars. You all did it more. All right? Now let it drop. Ah! But that feels great, doesn't it? Yeah. A two-way stretch, yeah. that's golf, right? You get twice for your money. Good. So we just finished our first flow exercise, and we want to overtrain now 
to make flow feel easier. So we're going to use a couple of exercises where we're going to work. It's like a therapy, and we're going to work on this point on the inhalation. So we're going to fight for air for a few seconds, and then pop open and feel the wind rush in, and then let it go in a relaxed fashion. All right, so let me demonstrate once and then join me. Fight for air, and then pop it open, and. Good. Let's fight for air even harder this time. Really suck against that. And. All right, all right. Let's continue on our inhalation therapy journey. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Which is going to help us flow better with uh, a similar exercise, but this time the execution of the exercise in terms of the suction and the pop afterward is exactly the same, but we're going to try to expand in four different areas of our body. So down low, forward, down low, backward, and then up high forward, and up high backwards. And for this, you want to watch from the side for Curtis and Sam, and you'll see a slight amount of expansion in all four of those areas. So this is called four corners. Here we go. And. Excellent. Blow all the air out and fight for air against that. And. Great. Great. So we're starting to get more opened up, which is going to make flowing later on much easier. Now let's sort of work our way back towards flow, but still in the therapy arena. And we're going to breathe in for three counts and we're going to let air come in. So we're going to leak a little bit on the way in. After three counts, we should be completely full. So fight hard enough against that resistance to be able to get full in three counts, then pop it out and blow out. Okay, here we go. And. Blow further out and let's do it again. And. Nice work. Nice work. One of the tension spots that we find when we're breathing a lot of times is a, a lot of muscular workout happens in the shoulders. So we want to get that loosened up and making sure that that's feeling comfortable when we do this intense breathing that we're doing. So we're going to take our hands and put them behind our back and we're going to take our left hand and grab our right wrist and pull to the left. Pull that right wrist to the left and feel that stretch in the shoulder area over here. Okay? Now we're going to lean our heads over to the left and feel that stretch even more. And as we start to exhale deeper into this stretch, we're going to tilt our bodies to the left. All right? So let's start doing that now and stretching out. With every exhalation, we're stretching deeper. All right? If you hear a tearing sound, that's too far. <laughs> Good. Now let's lean back up, drop our arms, shake it out. You can feel that stretch in the shoulder. Nice work. Nice work. Now let's reverse it. Let's reverse it. So let's take our left wrist into our right hand and pull to the right. Pull to the right so you can feel that stretch. We're going to keep going with the wrist stretch. So grab your left hand with your right. And we are going to tilt our head to the right. And we're going to breathe in. And breathe in deeper as we stretch even further. Feel it. And relax. We're switching vi uh, videos right now. So why don't you take a couple seconds to kind of collect yourself. Hopefully you're feeling the stretches. You're feeling that our posture is becoming straight. And what I like about these videos in particular, oh, we already switched. Can I finish my statement, Jude? I'm going to finish it anyway. Uh, <laughs> what I like about this is that, especially when you're working with beginners or, or adult choirs, uh, you don't necessarily need to use formal words or formal things to kind of understand holding the roof. 
I remember uh, in, in grade school learning about uh, Greek uh, mythology and Atlas. So I can say Atlas and, and then there'll be a fifth grader who will probably connect to something like that or, or tree trunks. But you can do these things and really get the, the, the results that you're looking for in terms of great posture and good breathing by just simply doing the exercise and not much words. So we're gonna continue on uh, with, uh, are we ready for oral? Let's do oral shape. If not, we'll finish with therapy, whatever is up at this time. Thank you, Jude. Good, good. You should be breathing this whole time. Now lean your head over to the right so you can feel the stretch. And as we exhale further, we're gonna tilt our bodies to the right to feel that stretch better. Here we go. Good, nice work. Enjoy that feeling of stretch. Good, let's tilt back up, drop it down, shake it out. Nice work. Yeah. yeah. Feels good. Yeah. Our shoulders are nice and loose. In order to do this, we're going to breathe in for four seconds to comfortably fold. Focus on what we're about to do, which is fortissimo blowing out. Halfway, I'll stop you, and then from halfway down to empty, absolutely empty, all right? So this work area is on the exhale side. Really work the two chunks of air that come out, right? Blow chunks, I like that. Now focus. and your deepest inhale. Focus. Sigh. <sighs> Therapies. Here's a great stretch to keep the whole upper body stretched out and make you breathe better. Let's put the right elbow behind your head, grab onto it with your left hand, and pull gently to the left. Start deep breathing. Every stretch is going to be deeper if you lean. And then slowly lean the body over, slowly to the left. <laughs> and then come up to upright, shake it out, roll your shoulders, shake your hand. I'm stuck. As a matter of fact, let's shake our feet out one at a time. A lot of tension comes from there. And then let's switch sides. Left elbow behind the head, right hand, pull gently to the right, deep breathe. And lean over to the right. You know, Mike, you look like the wrestling team photo from high school. <laughs> Let's come up to upright. Shake out your shoulders. Shake out your hands. And take a deep breath. Nice sigh. <sighs> Again. Yeah. 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 Now let's do a therapy that helps us to open up the oral cavity area so that we get a nice roundness to our flow and that will impact the flow studies also. So as we do this exercise, I want you to be thinking of your mouth shape, all right? Way to do it is to start very, very wrong. Watch Patrick as I make this sound with you and we're going to go from E to O. <laughs> Try doing that with me. Ready? Now we'll do it again, and this time we'll apply that round shape so you really memorize it, all right? So, Patrick, take us through this again. So what we'll do when we get done opening back up is we'll go back to our flow awareness exercises. So we'll start with floating the paper airplane, which is pianissimo air. We'll move to throwing a few darts, which is mezzo forte air, and then we'll move to a nice, open, smooth fortissimo air, which of course is bow and arrow. Okay? 
and just as open as the rest of the exercise that Absolutely. we've done. Here we go. Here we go. And. <laughs> Paper airplanes. Move the dynamic up and throw some darts. One more. And now fortissimo bow and arrow. Last one. That's great sounding breaths. Let's just sigh to make sure we're all the way there, but I'm sure we are. Yeah, you can hear perfect flow now in our breathing. Remember the O. Now let's get back to flow studies. And this time, we really need to get with Patrick, who's one of the great airflow people in the world. Seven liters of flow, as a matter of fact. Pat. <laughs> what we're going to do on these exercises is we're going to breathe in for a certain number of counts and out for a certain number of counts. And each set we're going to repeat twice. But before we do that, I want to show you a, a way to ensure that your form is correct. So remember, the three, first three parts of form are shape, that the breath is constant and that the breath is even. If we create resistance on the inhalation, we can determine, based on the sound of the resistance, whether or not we're in the right shape. So this sound, when we breathe in, is an indication that we're in the right shape. If our teeth are too close together, this would be the sound. If our lips are too close together, this would be the sound. If our throat is closed, this would be the sound. All right, The sound is an indication that we're in the right shape, that one. And we can also hear and feel that it's constant and even versus which would not be even, all right? So at any point in these exercises, I would encourage you to take a moment to check the inhalation. And as well on the exhalation, then just move your hand in front of your face and feel the evenness of your airflow, all right? So these are flow exercises. What we're going to start with is shortening the inhalation. So we'll go four in, four out, twice, and then three in, four out, and then two in, four out, and then one in, four out at the end, and we'll repeat that. And the application of that would be the loudest amount of air, the loudest amount of air. One breath in, four beats out, would be absolutely the loudest we could possibly play. And the application here is that when we learn to make this easy, it's easy when we play our horns. Here we go. Yeah. I want it to be easy. You want it to be easy? Cool. <laughs> Here we go. Don't forget at any point in time if you want to check to do that. All right? Here we go. Two, three, fours. Again. Three, four. Two, when sigh. <sighs> Great work. Fantastic flow. Fantastic. Let's keep flowing and work the other side, the exhale side. This is how we'll do it. We'll just start the same way and shorten the exhale side. Mm. You ready? Work on your form. So your shape. That the air is constant. That the air is even. And the change of direction is smooth for articulation and for releases. Three. Check your shape. Two. Constant. 
and even. And watch your change of direction so it's smooth. Inside. <sighs> oh, yeah. Excellent. Feel the heavy hands. That is beautiful. Excellent. You can hear the sound of excellent flow when it starts to happen on its most open, constant, and even level. For the purpose of overtraining, we're going to shorten both sides. We're going to shorten the inhalation as well as the exhalation. So we're going to start with two sets of four, then two sets of threes, then two sets of twos, and then we're going to get to the end, which is one, 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 one. All right? We're going to get dizzy when we do this exercise. All right? we're gonna, and we're going to enjoy it because it's cheaper than the alternative. When we get to this, one, 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 this is complete overtraining. As you get dizzy, go a few more cycles into the dizziness and mentally stay relaxed. Embrace the horror of the dizziness, if you will. All right? <laughs> when we're doing this, one of the purposes of this is many times brass players especially get dizzy when they play. And the normal human instinct is to preserve itself, is to protect itself, and the body thinks of dizziness as danger. So its, its tendency will be to tighten up when we feel that discomfort of dizziness. Relax into it, ignore that. We have to go the opposite side of instinct here to be able to train into that, and that's the purpose of this exercise. We're overtraining, we're embracing the horror. All right, so here we go. So four in, four out, twice, threes, twos, ones. Just follow me. Monitoring is still okay. One. Two, three, four in, nice and even. Again. Threes. Don't lock your knees. Stay relaxed down below as well. Twos. Oh, yeah. Ones. Work it. Smooth change of direction. Make these breaths even and easy as possible. Embrace it, embrace it, it feels great. Here we go, slow it down. <sighs> One more. <sighs> Beautiful, relaxed, constant, mm -hmm. even flow. Congratulations, welcome to Embracing the Horror. <laughs> <laughs>
And sometimes that's at a fast tempo, sometimes that's at a slow tempo. So we need to train and really be conscious and think about how that actually looks and how that actually feels. And so, uh, so that's what we're gonna do in the next minute. This is the last exercise. So thank you, Jude. And this is quick breathing. Here we go. Start with a quarter note in, quarter note in, four, four times. One, two, three. Excellent, excellent. Let's move up to our top tempos, all right? Let's all right, Jude, if you can bring me in. For time's sake, let me run you through the, the last uh, particular part of this quick breathing um, exercise. So what we're gonna do is well, actually two parts. One, we're gonna breathe in for eight counts and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tap this out for you. We're gonna, we're gonna breathe in, sorry. We're gonna breathe in for one count, out for eight and I'll tap it real quick. And then at the very end, we're gonna take a breath in a beat time and then come in. And then we're going to shorten that duration, right? So this is what Pat Sheridan and, and Sam Blakely would have walked you in, walked you through. So here we go. And one, two, ready. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Breathe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Breathe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Breathe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Breathe. Okay. The next exercise we're going to do. Is the same thing, but then we're going to breathe in a half count. All right, and breathe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 And relax. And then the last part uh, that we're going to do now is same out exhalation for eight counts, and then we're going to take a breath over a quarter. Uh, a quarter count. All right. Relax. And here we go. Breathe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 All right. And so those exercises help us to train to take a quick breath, a deep breath, uh, at the end of a, of a suspended um, um, sentence or, or, or phrase or, or play. So what does this all work? How does it apply? You might say, Eric, we don't have time in, in an hour uh, singing company or an hour rehearsal to do 30 minutes of breathing. Well, you're right. What, what? So how does this practically look? A little bit, of, uh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away was an old phrase that I would heard growing up. Uh, a little bit of breathing, maybe uh, two to three minutes worth of breathing uh, to get the flow, get the deep breath, the four corners that they're talking about in terms of the expansion, that helped. Well, Eric, what if you don't have, what if you don't have uh, breathing gym uh, videos or so? Well, there are other practical exercises, exercise, the flop over exercise um, and some of the other things, the bow and arrow uh, and, and relating the air to our dynamics, that's, that's dynamic, the shape, the, 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 the uh, oral uh, shape, that's huge as we go E, 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 O, O. That's something that Kathy hit on yesterday in terms of our, our sound. Imagine, if you will, if all of us had the same oral cavity, oral shape, uh, how our sound would, would, would look, how our sound would feel. And a lot of that could be worked on even when taking a breath. So 
um, before we kind of wrap this up um, and, and take some questions, let's go back to what we started off originally with uh, here uh, with our singing. So now that we've worked on our breathing, let's hear out sounds with that nice deeper cavity. So we're gonna go sing the same segment of Cleansing Power that we started off with maybe 30, 40 minutes ago. And let's see if you can notice notice anything different in what you sound like. Do you take it away? Do we have the clip or do I need to do something? Can you hear me? <laughs> Rest, two, three, four. We're getting ready for everybody in the third verse. Two, three, four, sing. How did it feel? How did it sound? Did you notice anything with your breath? Was it moist? Was it deeper? When we started getting the loud, louder dynamics, did you feel that uh, sensation of the, of the deep breath of the, of the bow and arrow? Or were you throwing darts? Or I, I don't know how that all looks, but for me, singing, and granted that it was a little bit later in the day, but singing with a deeper breath feels a lot more enjoyable. And my sound sounds a lot more pleasant and it, it just feels more efficient. And I don't know about you, but in, in, in today's age, I wanna, I wanna work smarter and not harder. I wanna work more efficient. So all the things that Kathy talked about in terms of producing a good sound is, is amplified here with breathing and good posture. And whatever we can do to instill that in ourselves, as, as, as participants, as singers, as leaders, if you are leading a group um, in little doses, it, it makes all the difference. And I reminded constantly of the fact that, uh, that in the Bible, we've been called to sing. We've been called to proclaim his word. We've been called to do it skillfully as well as it says in Psalm 33. So we wanna make sure that we do what we can. And, and, and so, for me, I've, I found in my teaching and in my approach to choral music, doing a little bit of the basics every day makes a whole lot of sense. And doing the basics just goes a long way. It makes our, our rehearsal, our, our, our experience smarter and not harder. So I thank you for the time. I hope there's some questions that you've been uh, uh, shooting Harold's way. 
uh, and uh, I'll be happy to take those at a time, put them in the chat, if, even if you, something came up or if you have a question about a particular exercise or something that, um, that we might be able to do. These are not all the exercises. There are plenty that we can do, uh, but these are some that I think you can take back, add to your tool belt and, and really make a difference in terms of your own personal singing and your, and your group leading as well. So at this time, Harold, I give it to you. Yeah. So we'll I'm going to start with a question and then I'm looking for questions to come in if they do come in. Um, let's say I'm, I'm breathing. Uh, what I was going at, Eric, is how to measure a phrase. So I'm not running out of air at the end. And I think for a lot of singers, you want to do lots with the end of a phrase, but there's just not enough there. And he talked about kind of overextending yourself. Can you talk about that a little bit? Like there's more air than we realize there. How do we access that? All right, so we can take a mathematical approach. I'm looking, I didn't bring my toys. So um, when I teach, I, I wanna step away and say, when I teach brass players, I actually physically measure their air. So I have the, uh, an Inspirex, which, um, which basically you can get any sort of medical supply store and I can know that I have like six liters of air. So when I think from a mathematical standpoint, six liters of air, I have another device that can, that can give the rate uh, of how much air I'm, I'm letting out. In, in, in absence of that device, we have to use good old fashioned math. So I know that I can take in six years of air. I, I use a metronome or a click to measure how far I can go in a steady airflow at, forti at fortissimo air, using his analogy of bow and arrows, at, um, at darts and at airplanes. I measure it. And then I just look at my piece of music just to kind of see, okay, in this context, I can probably go, let's, let's say if I'm singing uh, um, Are You Washed, or sorry, um, Cleansing Power, I know I can go probably at Fortissimo Air, maybe three and a half to four measures. So, so how do I access that? Well, we, we have to kind of overtrain to think that. And what I mean by that is imagine I'm going to use my, uh, I can't use that. I'm going to use my, my phone here. Um, imagine, if you will, this is a block of, of sound, all right? And the, the key is that we can take in the air and, we, and, and we're fine, but our sound, because of our air, could, could have the tendency, based on airflow, to be more, uh, look like a day crescendo. And so I have to train in my mind to kind of over, to more like crescendo the air, or think of a block of sound so that the sound that I have, the airflow that I have here, is the same at beat one, measure one is the same as the airflow at measure four, uh, if that makes sense. And then the quick breath happens and then I start that block over again. That requires us to really think and dig deep. And it may not happen overnight. It might be just two measure phrases at first and then we have to sneak in a breath. But whatever the case is, our mental approach has to be our airstream is a block regardless of where we are in our airstream. So it's in our air uh, exhalation. So it has to be intense, it has to still be, be moist, and we just have to overtrain and think that. And, and that, that's easier said than done, but that's the approach that I would take. And, and gradually you will add more and more to the airstream. At, gradually you add more and more to, the, to how long you can last sustaining the phrase with that beautiful sound. But start off slow and, and, and then just continue to add and, and access that. But you can't access that if that's shallow. It has to be a deeper felt warm type of breath that comes out in a, in a regulated, um, not regulated, but in an efficient time. Does that make sense, Harold? Or yep. did yeah, we have a question. Um, I'm just going to carry on here before we run out of time. How, um, how do you work with these kinds of exercises with groups of varying ages to be comfortable to for all, but beneficial as well? So, uh, I'll, I'll take, Everybody uh, participated today, which was great, by the way. All yeah. ages. <laughs> oh, great. great. Um, so I, I guess you, you take it for what it is. Um, for example, I would, do, I would do like the trunk stretching ones just to kind of work on getting everything loosened up. I might do a flop over, which everyone can do. Um, and then I might do a couple of the bone exercises or the breathing in, the regulating the four counts. This is golden because this... this this associates um, kind of a, a meter built in as you're raising it. Those are things that are universal. I think the application of them work regardless of age, just the amount of breaks. Um, 
and 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 the, the expectation to go full length. I mean, thirty minutes is is a long time to do it. And at mm -hmm. age forty four, my body feels different than it did uh, when I started doing these uh, um, uh, thirteen years ago. And, and and so I recognize the changes there. But a little bit goes a long way. And you know what? When you buy it, when, when they see the results, doesn't matter if you're age nine or age seventy. Uh, when, when you experience the results, you, you're going to want to do it. So I, I, I guess my answer to the question would be, you know, if you're approaching it and showing them that this breathing really helps in terms of the sound, it helps with everything, uh, the, the oral shape, uh, all those different things, posture, uh, all those different things, um, people will see the benefit and will give it uh, the, a shot uh, as their body tells them, uh, as their body allows. So the better control we have of our air, probably the better sound we have. Because if Definitely. you're throwing your sound, all this air wants the arrow kind of thing, but out of control, it's not going to be a nice sound. It's the same on our instruments, right? It's the same thing. Exactly. So my last question is quiet breath or are we making noisy breaths? You know, we have instrumentalists who do both. So what do you think, Eric? Is the so, breath quiet that we're taking as a singer? I would. So this is one difference from from the uh, from the tuba players so the breath the breath can be deep and and you can take the fortissimo air breath without making a huge sound and sound like you're Darth Vader <laughs> uh, you can take it, it, it can happen as a quiet breath but I would say that um, but they they did hit on something in terms of the uh, the darts and, and the airplanes you take the breath appropriate for what you need it for. And right. taking a dart doesn't necessarily, and, and throwing a dart as, as, as they did uh, for, for mezzo forte and then the pair prayer thing for pianissimo has much to do with air rate and, 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 and oral cavity as it does with volume. So, um, so yeah, it is quiet for singing. That's probably one, and we don't do whoa. We, we, we don't close off our, our, our old sound when we breathe in. It's more of an oh open sort of open sort of approach but uh, it is a quiet breath okay good so with that saying eric i have to say thank you so much for joining us today another fabulous session for us vocalists thank you very much thank you bye-bye guys bye-bye